moment. So as it stands um, right now, and I'll bring it to the screen for you, and you can see this for yourself at Worldometer, um, the population of Portugal, the live numbers are 10,108,913. That's a few more <laughs> since last night, isn't it? Which, which um, may add the fuel to the fires that we are overpopulating the world. But I saw a very interesting uh, video on, on trigonometry, the trigonometry podcast, podcast. And there was a speaker on there. Forgive me because I can't remember his name, but I think his uh, documentary was The Population Bomb. Ultimately, we are facing um, a, a huge population collapse uh, after it's peaked at about 11 billion um, in, in what, 20, 20, in the 2030s, 2040s. Given where we're at at the moment and how children and, and less children are being born, and we're having a bit of a population uh, collapse or the beginnings of a population collapse. Uh, look it up. Do your own research, as it were. But here we go. Um, we're looking at um, the growth rate of population as well and the numbers. And there's been a bit of a wavy line. My favorite part of this graph is in 1974, the, the yearly population growth rate went up as high as 1.48%. But 1974... Check out that date. People felt after the revolution. Um, well, they said Let's put it this way. They celebrated in a certain way, didn't they? And there was a little bit of a population boom or the beginnings of one, because that's how it works, isn't it? You know, when you're when we're created, our effects are felt over our whole lifetime and they're all scaled up across the population. So, you know, what what's happening now, the amount of children born now will be affecting the, the current demographics, you know, we've got an aging population, haven't we? And not many young people being born or not as many as we thought there might be. And that's creating quite a worldwide difficulty or will do um, in time to come. Let's have a look at these bullet points. The current population of Portugal is um, over 10 million, uh, 10 million, 100,000. Um, this was uh, yeah, today's data or yesterday's data, 10 million, 108,267. Um, based on the Worldometer elaboration of the latest United Nations data. And who am I to doubt it? Um, population 2020 is estimated at 10. Um, why is it population 2020 estimated if it's now 2023? Anyway, forget that bit. But Portugal's population is equivalent to 0.13% of the total world population, ranking at 89 uh, in the list of countries. And that makes for an interesting, interesting list with loads of countries and dependencies, by the way, not just countries, but the dependencies, some of which I've never even heard of. Um, if you want to have a look at, over at that at your leisure at worldometer.info. Population density, and this is where I where I began this search last night. Population density in Portugal is 111 per square kilometer. Kilometer. Kilometer! Um, 288 people per million squared. Now, you know what is what is your reference point there? But the population density in Portugal is low. Let's face it. Um, depending on where you go, your experience of that, of course, will be different in Lisbon and Porto and on the Silver Coast, where most people are, or the coast in general. Um, but you can experience some really low and lovely population density in the Portuguese interior. And I noticed just recently, um, there is a new initiative published to encourage people with tax breaks and other bonuses and perks to move into the interior. Portugal is doing, the government is doing something to try and lure people back to the interior, which I thoroughly applaud. Total land area is 91,590 square kilometers, which means that Portugal can fit into Central Park in New York, apparently. Only kidding. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. It is a, it is a tiny place within the scheme of things and does fit into um, quite a few American states in its entirety as a country here. 66.5%, then I rounded up, that up to 70, but 66.5, 66 66.5% of the population is urban, and the median age in Portugal is 46.2 years. Quite a few of us here over that median age, I think. So here we go, population of Portugal. In 1955, it was uh, 8,625,000, and of course in 2020, uh, the stats show 10 million, nearly 10 million, 200,000 there. And uh, it's hovered around. Uh, well, it was in 1955 was 47 in the world rankings of population and now 89th, uh, which is interesting, isn't it? So it's dropped uh, in, in that sort of population impact estimation there. Population forecast. This I find interesting as well. So if you have been brought up on many of the givens, of um, socioeconomics and the way the world is headed. You know, the things about the environment. There are certain sort of 
indoctrinations, aren't there, and givens as you're being educated and what what we would have ourselves believe generally. So if I if I just scroll down a little bit, we might be thinking, mightn't we, that it's tw 2020 figures are 10 million people in Portugal. Oh, my God, it's going to be 20 million by 2050 with the population boom and all these people on the planet. As it turns out, United Nations prediction here, 9 million. It's going to drop. It's going to drop um, steadily uh, between now and 2050. Uh, yeah, it will go up in the world rankings of um, populous nations, as I understand it, as I've interpreted here. And you know numbers aren't my <laughs> favourite or best thing in life, any of you who know me. I uh, do get a kind of number blindness uh, that goes on. Discount clear, is it? it I might have a mild form of that. Um, and migrants as well, the, the, those, the, those numbers there and the median age changing to 52, interestingly, as well. Population density will go down. Uh, urban population will go up uh, by their estimation to 78.5%. And that's, that's to get everybody into the 15-minute cities, isn't it? Um, Portugal demographics then, life expectancy currently 82.65 years. That's uh, life expectancy at birth of both sexes. Um, infant mortality, 2.3. And um, we have a historical chart to look at there. We've, and of course, thankfully, that has gone down progressively over time. And deaths in the under uh, under age five uh, group, 2.7 per 1,000 live births. Again, a, a pattern that we're glad to see going down. Um, main cities by population in Portugal, uh, just over half a million in Lisbon, just over just under a quarter of a million in Porto. And regions that I don't normally see as classifications here. And I'll come back to your comments in just a moment. Just, just get a little bit of a way through this. Evra, where Ubi is, 55,000 people. These are tiny towns, aren't they? Tiny cities uh, by other standards in the world. Uh, Funchal has uh, 100,000, just over 100,000. Braga, 120,000. Very interesting. And this reflects, doesn't it, the um, low population density of Portugal. A mere 33,000 in Castelo Branco. Many of them um, with uh, white vans. Uh, no, actually, pr probably the people with white vans and dogs on strings in Castelo Branco probably won't be in the official figures, I jest. Or do I? Um, and in Sintra, um, a mere 26,000 people. Vizio, 26,000 people as well. San Martino, not this one. Or is it? Um, 26,000. And, and this population, of course, here in San Martino uh, really varies throughout the year. Caldas de Rania, 27,000. Very interesting stuff here, I think. Thank you to Worldometers uh, for sharing it with us uh, and, and uh, being able to share it with you this morning. I'll come back. I might deep dive a little bit further, or I might be lured, as we've only got 20 minutes to go to some of the news headlines. But we can go into uh, fertility rates and gross domestic products and countries in the EU by population and scale it up and get a bit more... Um, a little bit more um, comparison there, but urban versus rural population, I always think is uh, very interesting. But I want to see what you're saying in the chat. Why am I getting ad job adverts for a DevOps repository manager? It's not something I've ever done in my life, quite frankly. Um, yes, urban, uh, I'll come back to this, the urban, how that's changed, the urban rural population ratio. Um, so thank you, Worldometer. And uh, let's see what you're saying in the comments. Quite a few comments this morning. Thank you very much. Um, we will scroll back then in that case and see what you're saying here. And we've got the dad jokes to come. And, of course, climaxing this morning with another installment of the God Squad program from Coach Turner, Gentle Fitness for the Bon Viveurs. Yes, maps never went out of style for as far as Ubi's concerned. Have you already visited in Evra the Roman Temple and the Capella dos Ossos, the Bones Chapel? That is um, a major tourism destination, isn't it, in Evra? And known, I think, as well, Evra, increasingly for its culinary and cuisine-based um, experiences there. I always like paper as backup and primary graphic. I still prefer a good drafting table, lead, lead holder and quill pen. I can just imagine, and uh, working by candlelight, um, even if the sun is shining, just for that, um, that feeling of being... Um, somewhat dated and traditional Ubi. Antonio, yes, a family there now, have done it once, plus a lifetime of pilgrimages, Catholic piety, <laughs> mortifications. Are you going to join us on screen one day, Ubi? You are an interesting chap. 
Um, I'm strolling up to the Bone Church now. No euphemism there. Um, channeling our lady, channeling our lady of perpetual responsibility. Um, you can, yeah, it's often interesting, isn't it? The impact that a Catholic upbringing can have on people. Um, Antonio, I was in Evra already, um, but uh, I didn't visit those places. I have to do it, says um, Antonio to himself, possibly there this morning. Um, Estou muito bem, Antonio. Eu danço e ponto muito todos os dias. So there you go, having a lot of fun. Um, it's Victoria Benson. Hola, bom dia, kids. It's Victoria Benson in the Algarve. Okay, um, Squire of the Shires also in. How are you doing this morning? Am I thinking, am I on the right lines there with Squire, Square Eyes of the Shires? I wonder. Bom dia, todos. Pessoas boas this morning and um, loving it. Yes, your A1, A2 is showing, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, Ms. Benson. Uh, Bye, Andy is here. Bom dia, Malta. Just back from a beautiful, peaceful walk through the Portuguese countryside with a lovely cool breeze. Uh, cheers. Bye, Andy. Good to see you and uh, nice to be uh, conversing with you on WhatsApp as well. Um, just for comparison, then, uh, when we when we look at the populations here in Portugal, as we were just now, Los Angeles metropolitan population, 12 and a half million. Oh, my goodness. Aren't we lucky over here? And um, where should is a question in from Suze. Where should I arrange a meetup? Guarda Vizio realizing public transport may influence de decisions to come. Well, um, this, the Discover Portugal weekends, which will be starting in uh, September of this year, Vizio and Guarda could be candidates. So why, rather than uh, having people going over there for two hours for a meetup, if somebody wants to offer their quite sort of loose hosting services, and by that I don't mean loose in that in the sexual sense i mean it's not going to be too much of an onerous responsibility we're looking for people who who want to say come to my town i will connect you with local tour guides i'll tell you about a few of the good restaurants and hotels and you pick and choose where you want to go and we can meet up from time to time and we're going to have a good old pee up on a saturday night in all of these places we're going to have a party on the saturday evening at one probably at one of the bigger restaurants or hotels and um, people can be free to come and go, but let's go there for the weekend rather than just driving over like you did, Suze. You know, you spent eight hours in the car to spend two hours with people. Why don't we do it so that we, we can arrive on a Friday night or a Saturday morning and hang out in places like Guarda and Vizio? This could be very good for people who are coming on scouting trips, for example. So um, put yourself forward, Suze, whichever you prefer, really. We need people who know a little bit about their town and can make those sort of recommendations. You're not going to be responsible for everybody's fun, happiness and enjoyment over that weekend. You're just going to be doing a bit of signposting and being proud of your location. So suggestions most welcome. Do send them to me. You can do that on 913-590-303. And Antonio's town does show up on that list in the top 10. What is, what is it Oirash, uh, that was in there, uh, Antonio? And thinking maybe Penacova Beach. The bus does go there. Penacova, that yes, or um, Penacova, not too far from Coimbra, right? So I guess when we have our Coimbra meetup, we could be uh, having a, spending a bit of time at uh, Penacova as well. Do like it there. Um, that's if I've got that right. Okay, um, it is a, um, a have your say day, if you wish. And uh, people, you have been, of course, in the chat. If you want to call in on 913-590-303, you can. Um, I think I've played all the video I've got, apart from the video, the... Um, God Squad program video that's looking at the three basic principles earlier on. Yes, I have. So, John, thank you. Anna, thank you very much indeed as well for your contributions this morning, as well as Coach Turner, uh, both ends of the show, as it turns out, uh, this morning. So let's go back to your comments and this uh, population and demographics and a quick look at the... Um, uh, some of the news headlines as well. Uh, morning, love. I want to uh, just acknowledge your commitment. You must be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> to the audience, why might Carl be so tired? He he, not that on this occasion. Flipping kids mucking about in the, the early hours of the morning. I've already said, uh, Mrs. M, uh, feel good astrology, Mrs. M, that I bellowed down the stairs and thought to myself, oh my God, I've turned into my dad. But in that, I, it was it was good to be challenging uh, old man Munson at 3.30 this morning. And I'm not too tired. Um, this community gives me wings and life. It's like it's like my virtual Red Bull, quite frankly. Um, it's like a double espresso every morning uh, being with everybody here. Bon dia, Antonio. Late landing this morning, GMP, school trip day for the little one and stable run 
for the Falabella. Simon, then, with a possibly, I don't know. Um, so I'm going with either Square Eyes of the Shires or Sci-Fi there. It's so confusing um, with all of these nom de plumes and pseudonyms that people use. Um, forgive me if I um, if, if I get them wrong. Um, but yes, thank you for thinking of me this morning. And a cup of coffee. <laughs> That would be so great. But you have a lie in because you must be exhausted too. And no, not for that reason. Maybe later, hey, Mrs. M. Okay, uh, back to the demographics you can see on screen there. And port this I find this interesting about Portugal um, because, as I said, I was looking up uh, population density, which led me into worldometers and all of these in incredible facts and figures here. And uh, you can see this um, blue and green here, 1955, the um, rural population was 5,767,000 and a half, and the urban population was a mere 2,857,000. And so, look, it's changed. It's flipped pretty much uh, completely, hasn't it? Although the population has also increased uh, overall, we can see that we have uh, here in Portugal become more of an urban species than a rural one. Uh, what do you think of that? I mean, you know... For me, and why I came to Portugal in the first place was to experience a rural life. That hasn't happened, as it turns out. And there are a number of reasons for that. Um, as much as I would love, and Mrs. M, I think, would love to live a, a rural existence, it does bring with it certain challenges, doesn't it, and car dependency. And I suppose that's the problem, as is expressed on this, demo, on this um, demographic uh, um, infographic here, is that it's polar, isn't it? What about sort of intermediate towns and um ex settlements let's call them settlements where you do and you know it sounds like i'm making the case for 15 minute cities here which i am not i do i'm not a fan of that agenda and, and other people telling us how we should live from remote offices and boardrooms and planning rooms who don't understand our lifestyle uh, basically aren't interested in other people's lives apart from just manipulating their way of um you know their ideology on people um i i think we can rely on on our own um on a good day when some of the um neoliberal factors are taken out of the picture we behave in, in in a naturally good way i think i mean that is my view of human beings and it's only when the 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 sort of metaphorical water of the aquarium is being tipped out that the fish go to war on each other Otherwise, you know, we're maintaining balance and we live and let live. I, that's my view anyway. And I, you know, it just, it just, this is another part of the problem here, isn't it? It's like either urban or it's rural, when in fact, could we not be living more rural lives with a little bit more infrastructure that doesn't quite turn it into some sort of um, urban, densely urban place? There must be some middle ground and something a little bit more human scale available which isn't just dependent on, you know, corporate neoliberal um, motivations that seem to shape the way we live. I hope I'm making some sense, or, or maybe I just do sound like I'm ranting a little bit as well. But these are these are incredible figures here. That um, th This is reassuring to know as well, isn't it? The uh, life expectancy in Portugal. Uh, women expected to live to 85.3 years. Uh, males always uh, a shorter life expectancy, but 79.8 years combined at 82.7 years, the life expectancy. And it, it wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to think of that as a good old lifespan and something when you've adopted the Portuguese lifestyle that you might aspire to as well, uh, whilst ending up possibly in the good morning. Have we still got that as a dream? The good morning Portugal retirement home. That could be a lot of fun, couldn't it, in years to come? <laughs> some people's worst nightmare of course um and a cold kettle with faucet for just one euro 34 what on earth has possessed google to serve me that up as an ad although i do have to say uh, the advertising has uh, improved somewhat and i don't get quite so many uh, viagra and hair transplant adverts as i used to so um let's let's um, move from worldometers.info i will put that into the chat for you in case you want to have a look at that for yourself Personally, I find that very interesting and uh, certainly from the point of view of how our lives are being shaped as well as how we might shape them ourselves and what we might do in the future. There are turbulent forces at work, are there not? Um, Socioeconomic factors uh, that feel like they're out of our control and it will be lovely, wouldn't it, would it not, to um, feel like we've got more 
control over our destiny and we're not and we are more, more resilient let's put it that way we are more resilient to the shocks that uh, um have been um have either come our way or have been imposed on us aha aha okay thank you very much and thank you for your penacova pick as well possible site of a gumper gathering they'll say this in years to come gump we should have a plaque system as well gumpers were spotted here in the year 2023 and it will be AI that uh, is, is able to detect the presence of gumpers and um, using a, uh, a 3D printer, knock up a quick plaque and display it uh, in these hallowed, hallowed places uh, we, where, we found, where we've gathered and found ourselves um, back in the day. Uh, here